back. Hi, and I'm Janice. And welcome back to another edition of Urban Lifestyles. And it's the fall edition. And you know, I know it's fall because it seems like everybody's leaves are in my backyard. Yes, it's time to get out and start raking. Yes, and that is something that I totally, totally, totally hate. But it's one of those necessary evils. Yes, transitioning of the season as life goes on. Yeah. We've got a great show today. Some of the things we're going to be talking about is a nonprofit organization in Louisville, Kentucky called Amped. We're going to catch up with Tyler, who's going to be talking about what's it called? My Swaggy Wag. And a segment that you did with MSD. And of course, we're here at Middle of Town Cycling. So we've got some bike accoutrements that you should definitely check out. We'll take a quick break and back with more right after this. We are mothers, fathers, neighbors, and friends. Working hard when the weather is good and even harder when it's not. With online updates to keep you safe and informed during a storm. Programs to save you energy and money. And new projects to help us provide cleaner, more reliable energy. We are more than an energy company. We are LG&E. We are LG&E. We are LG&E. Our energies go to serving you. Louisville is good. B96.5. Your man Nick Cannon is in the building and we taking over. We gonna be wilder every morning. About to have some fun, y'all. Let's go up. Press another move. Locking in to the Nick Cannon Morning Show, 6 to 10 on B96. Well, you know, Denise, I got an opportunity to go down in about 12th and Jefferson to an organization. I have to admit, I did not know a lot about, but it's a nonprofit called Amped, and the director is one high energy individual. I'll tell you what. Just watch this piece. Well, we're at a very unique location in the heart of the West End, and the name of this nonprofit is called AMPT, which stands for Adventurous Minds Produce Extraordinary Dreams. I'm here with the executive director, David W. Christopher, and also the founder, and I know you founded this back in 2014, and welcome to Urban Lifestyles, and tell me about your dream, your vision, how do we get to this point? Yeah, so in 2014, um, just really was trying to find a place for kids to be to be able to do something productive. Uh, then not just to basically keep them busy or tire them out, but to give them something productive to do in a safe place to be. And so we came up with the idea for this uh, recording studio that was going to be a space where they could come and kind of learn some things about um, the music business. And we went from that to um, learning instruments and all the things. So basically, anything that had to do anything to do with um, with the music business and so and that kind of evolved into where we are now. So how many kids did you initially have in your program? Initially there were like maybe 15 kids in the summer camp right and then we started we started out and then that that, that kind of grew over the time over time to something like you know 30 kids and then we, we ended up outgrowing the space that we were in so we ended up having to move into a different building. So now you are serving how many kids? Uh, so last count around 2,000 a year. Wow. Yeah. So, because we have we have we have three locations where we do our music program. We also in JCP uh, several JCPS schools. Uh, we do work for the Boys and Girls Club, for Neighborhood House, and other organizations. And so we're kind of spread around um, doing a lot of things. And we got we actually got another opportunity coming up here soon in Russell neighborhood right here, Baxter Community Center. And we say AMP, we kind of use that kind of an umbrella term. Mm -hmm. So talk about some of the other programs. Yeah, so we have, the, the, there's a lot of people know us about from the Music Academy, AMP Music Academy. Well, since then, what we realized is that parents needed help too. So the kids who were coming to our program were doing really well, but they were going back into homes where parents were struggling. And, and that was because of low wage or no wage jobs. Um, and so we started a technology training program because we know those jobs start at a living wage. The other thing that we, we started soon after that, about a year after that, was once we realized we were putting money in the pockets of these families in the community, that with a community with no resources, they would, need, they would end up leaving that community. And so one of the unintended consequences was we would strip bare a, a neighborhood. So what we did is we started the Russell Technology Business Incubator to then support black and brown businesses in West Louisville. You know, I hear a lot of people talk about, well, we're going to start a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. But you have started a nonprofit yeah, yeah. in every sense of the word. So how do you explain your success? Okay. So the myth is that nonprofit is not a business. And the fact is nonprofit is a tax status. We are a business. And so what I, what I knew early on was I needed to run it like a business. So I needed to do all the things that a business does to be successful. And I know business ownership. I was a business owner, had a technology company, and I still have several other businesses. And so I ran it like like a, the business that it is, and that's how we became as successful as we have. What are some of the feedback that you're getting? I mean, great feedback because we're a program that believes in getting to a solution, right? We're not trying to band-aid anything. In our music program, when the kids learn the instrument and they get their grades together, we have an educational assessment counselor and a partnership with JCPS so we know about the grades, attendance, and behavior. But once they do that and they learn the instrument, we give them the instrument. We provide them with laptops and hotspots in their homes so that they can have access 
to like what they need to get done in the classes. In our in our um, workforce technology program, we don't just train folks in technology. We actually have partners on the other end that are providing jobs, right? So that's the solution. In our business incubator, this is a year-long incubator that provides every single thing that a business would need to be successful. And so that's sort of been our, that's been the thing is that we always talk about getting to completion, not band-aid sort of programs. So people have to be keep recycling through the program. And you are not finished because we were just talking earlier and you're starting with another location. So this is the 18,000 square foot technology training center. Uh, and on the first floor, there'll be a free child care for people to come. The people can come to train at that location. They'll have somewhere for their children to go. And while they train, uh, we'll have a cafe, a co-working space, an event space and green space and all that. The idea behind this is that we want to build up that whole area at 17th and Market in West Louisville and bring it so people can walk to work, they can walk to shop, they can walk to eat, and we can build up, we can revive this neighborhood. Because I tell people this all the time, is that we have to stop acting like it's not about the money. When we can we can do all these subsidies and all these sort of assistance programs that we can, and those are all great, and I love, they love them and they are important. But if you put money in the pockets of the people in the community, that grows the community. And so we have to, we, we have to focus on programs that do that. You know, it's one thing that's very obvious. You're a strong fundraiser, you're committed to the community, and you obviously have have the ear of corporate America. So when they see you coming, uh, <laughs> what do they usually say? Uh, I mean, they're, they're receptive. Because here's the, here's the thing, this is the other thing that I think, and, I, and I, you, know, you can call it secret sauce or whatever. The one of the things that's really important to me is about creating relationships. I'm not a transactional person. And so I can look at all the corporations and foundations and the people that we receive money from, I consider them friends. Like I told them, and I'll say this, you know, that, that I'll spend the money. But then what? Like we have to have a partnership and a relationship that lasts beyond the grant. Like what else can you do? Because there's a lot of in-kind things that they can do. And not only that, your friends will speak on your behalf. And so like most people don't understand this is that most people can bring you more money than they can give you. And so if I create a friendship, then that person is going to be out there speaking on my behalf to other people. And that's the number of success. And so like people wonder, like, how do we know all these people and how do we get all these grants and things? But we because we're getting the work done and we're, we're putting we're putting our, our our resources back into the community. And so if you look at we have a staff of like we just as of today, I mean, as of Monday, we only have 11 full time staff. We have five locations and three programs. As you can see, um, they are doing some great work here in this community. I just look at it as a door opener mm -hmm. and to usher people through the door of improvement, of development, and making it accessible for those because that way it gives them a better chance to rise up. Yeah, and you know, when I was talking to him, he was just sharing some stories how just different people just out of the blue have come on board and offered him help and, you know, given him this and that and the other one, just really creating opportunities. And I told him I just wanted to get a miniature version of him that I could carry around in my pocket because uh, he is really uh, just showing you what success looks like and how it's so important to give back. We'll take a... You are correct. We'll take a quick break and back with more right after this more than just getting from one place to another. It's healthy, social, good for the environment, and anyone can do it. We at Middletown love cycling and really love helping others discover a new passion. Stop in today and let our friendly, knowledgeable staff help you get started. We cater to beginners as well as experienced cyclists. We're a local business that cares about our community because we are a part of the community. Come in today and get on a bicycle that fits your needs and improve your lifestyle. At lg and &E and KU, we're always working hard to make your life a little easier because we know you've got your hands full. Our new mobile app gives you the power to check your account balance, review your payment history, and effortlessly pay your bill from anywhere while making it easier than ever to report and track power outages. Download the app today to get the convenience of lg and &E and KU at your fingertips. Station for R and B. Can we swim a lake by the ocean? Magic 101.3. Give me that green light with your permission. We're live, local, and local. Magic 101.3, the home of Steve Harvey and Morning. Well, Denise, I know you had an opportunity to catch up with our partners at MSD, so tell us what's going on. Just learning again about how you can take a tragedy of sorts when it comes to flooding uh, waters over and affecting the landscape and the territories of neighborhoods, and MSD is giving back uh, once again, so let's just take a look. 
Yes, I am back again for another segment with MSD where we do feature the safe, clean waterways provided by them. And we're here because this is an example yet again of how MSD gives back to the community to provide enhancement. I'm here with the executive director, Mr. Tony Parrott. And Tony, welcome once again. Oh, always great to be on Urban Lifestyles. Yes, um, I'm excited here because, again, because of monies and funds that MSD had been given, there's going, there's going to be a benefit in this area. Just share a little bit about the story behind this. Well, you know, this particular area is a piece of property that we have owned, and it's a piece of property that is in a floodplain. And, you know, it's one of the opportunities that we have by partnering with uh, Metro Council and partnering with uh, Metro Parks to create an amenity and a park that will benefit a lot of uh, kids in this area for generations to come. Uh, this particular park here uh, is uh, going to be Windsor, Windsor Park and uh, it's really located in a great area in South Louisville and uh, just shows you that wherever we serve uh, we want to be able to assure that MSD is a part of the community. It's approximately 10 acres and uh, it's a part of our mission to be able to give back to the community. In fact, this is actually the third park that uh, we have uh, transferred property to in the last six weeks. Uh, we also started out with uh, 20 acres that we transferred to uh, uh, Park Alliance for Maple Street. Earlier this week, we had an opportunity to transfer approximately five acres of property uh, that was uh, surplus from the construction site of our waterway protection tunnel transferring that property to Waterfront Development Corporation, which is in turn going to be used to uh, be a part of phase four expansion of Waterfront Park into West Louisville. Uh, this is an example of how MSD and all the projects that we do in the community, we want to try to create those amenities that are going to be an opportunity for communities and for the children to be able to benefit. So just to help the viewers understand about the benefit, uh, the different uh, areas across the city and the land that MSD gifts, I'm going to say, to the city, how is it that you all come to have this type of land? Uh, most of the properties, particularly like uh, Maple Street, uh, we actually pursued a uh, federal emergency management grant through FEMA. Uh, after a major flood event in 2009. So uh, we were able to get that grant over $9 million and we were able to buy up over 100 parcels of uh, land or property and demolish those and free up 20 acres of green space. Uh, part of the conditions under a FEMA grant is, is that it has to be uh, preserved as a conservation space and can't be built on. So it's really prime for uh, creating parks and, and community assets. I can say that it's, I'm so excited about it and in agreement I'm beginning to understand more so that wherever there has been I'm going to say uh, just times of flooding I guess you could say that there's something good that comes out of it and of course MSD has to be a part of it and then this is the benefit that we receive. You know, fortunately, MSD is involved in a lot of communities where there may be a floodplain or properties that are in the floodplain uh, that we are conserving and preserving at this point. And when there's an opportunity, particularly if there's uh, collaborations or partnership opportunities, we want to be able to turn those uh, acreage or turn those uh, properties into assets. And that's an example that we have here at Windsor Park. And so when would the uh, projected unveiling is going to be for this particular park? The uh, construction of this will begin in the spring of next year. So I think there's plans for a spray park and then there's even maybe in the f future phases a, a plan for uh, soccer fields, et cetera. So it's going to be a great amenity for this neighborhood, a great amenity for this community, and we're just glad to be a partner. Well, I'm so glad to have been able to be here for this occasion and that Again, what MSD does to serve for the community of Louisville and around. Anything else you would like to say, Tony? No, I just think that, you know, it's just so great to have uh, collaboration and partnership at all levels of government uh, to be able to uh, give back to the community. And we really are just blessed to, be, uh, to have the opportunity to be a part of those partnerships.
You know, one thing that is definitely obvious is that if it's something positive going on in the community, that MSD is involved. MSD helps us in a lot of different ways, no doubt about it. You're correct. We'll take another break and back with more. Others, fathers, neighbors, and friends. Working hard when the weather is good. And even harder when it's not. With online updates to keep you safe and informed during the storm. Programs to save you energy and money. And new projects to help us provide cleaner, more reliable energy. We are more than an energy company. We are LG&E. We are LG&E. We are LG&E. Our energies go to serving you. Louisville was good. B96.5. Your man Nick Cannon is in the building and we taking over. We're going to be wilder every morning. We're about to have some fun, y'all. Let's go up. Press another move. Locking in to the Nick Cannon Morning Show, 6 to 10 on B96.5. It's time to crack an egg. Easy, any style egg works. Or a smile. Well done, this looks great. Time to share a story. We have a great way to start our discussion. With old friends or new ones. When you're a caregiver. Time to breathe in. And up. Good job. Then let it all out. Rah! It's never been easier to connect, learn, and have fun. Cheers. So let's do it together. Come find us at aarp.org slash near you is responsible for over 700,000 deaths in the U.S., and that number continues to rise. 9,000 of those deaths were in Kentucky, but we can make a difference by taking the shot. If you don't want to do it for yourself, do it for someone you love. We will never be able to get back to normal until we all do our part, so let's all get vaccinated. So wear your mask, wash your hands, roll up your sleeves, and take the shot. So please, take, take the, the shot. Well, as we said at the top of the show, we're at Middle of Town Cycling, which is right at Bardstown Road and Gardner Lane, and we're talking about bikes. And I know we didn't ride a whole lot this past summer, but it's still not too late if you uh, want to get it in, because we're here with Nero today, and she's going to show you some accessories you can use to stay warm. Take a look. Well, we're back again at Middle of Town Cycling, which is at Bardstown Road and Gardner Lane, right behind Sullivan's Bakery. And I'm here with Nira, and we're talking about not only cycling, but it's changing weather, which means changing gear. Yes, sir. Very much. It's getting cold. It is getting cold. It is here. <laughs> yes, sooner than I would like it to be. Yes, that is true. Well, either way, we've got you set up for everything that you need to go biking outside. All right. so. so, and that is a good transition. So, we're talking about clothing, apparel. So, show us some of the things that we're looking at today. Um, so, anything from arm warmers, knee warmers, toe warmers, neck warmers, you know, gloves, hand warmers. We, we've got everything um, to keep you going. You don't have to stop cycling. And do do the I'm sorry. And does this type of outer gear really make a difference? It does. Um, you know, there are different also categories. If you know, if it's a little cool, then you wear something not as warm, uh, and then you kind of work your way up um, to depending on what weather you prefer riding. There are some people, especially mountain bikers, who love going mountain biking in the snow when it's frozen. The ground's frozen. That's the best time to ride. Um, then you kind of get into a slightly warmer gear, but you don't have to necessarily go all in. You can kind of figure out where you want to ride what temperature and then kind of go from there. All right, so let's grab some of this and, and let's talk about it. So some of these are fleece lined and um, they are very, very, very warm if you notice. So it looks like a regular jacket. It is, um, you know, water resistant. So if you're in the snow, you get caught in the snow, the snow will just kind of melt off and run, run off. But um, you won't feel the wind. You are going to stay warm inside and um, it's great for riding for, you know, below. 45 degrees and 35 degrees right. weather. And um, these jackets here, they look like they're more uh, water resistant, yep. but also I'm sure warmth as well. Absolutely. Like these are nice because they have zippers here. So when you do get warm, you are able to take the sleeves off and make it a sleeveless kind of a jacket, but it does keep the wind. So like if you are a 59 degree weather in the morning, you're doing a morning bike ride, um, you can initially wear this and as you get warm, you can kind of take some of the, the gear off and then put it in your back pocket so you're not that warm. Okay. And then we've got the shorts and the full length pants. Absolutely. So the shorts here, the full length pants here are what I would recommend if you're going to go in the winter riding uh -huh. and they are also fleece lined so they keep you very, very, very warm mm -hmm. um, at least when you start your ride and, and continue to keep you warm if it's going to continue to stay very cold. Um, so these are nice, they're long. Um, some people prefer, depending on where they're riding, 
they will continue wearing shorts but then they will add some knee warmers or they'll wear some arm warmers and leg warmers and as it gets warm as you're riding more all you have to do is just slip the warmers down to your uh, wrist or slip the warmers down to your ankles and continue riding so you're not that hot. Okay, now something I'm not familiar with are these booties type things, shoe yeah, covers. Absolutely, yeah. So these are also like your normal bike shoes are ventilated, you mm -hmm. know, during the summer because uh, they wick um, sweat and all that stuff and keep it fresh. But during the winter, if you want to continue using the same shoes, you just kind of use them as a cover so they don't, the, the cold air doesn't get into your feet and make you cold, make your extremities cold. So these are just covers that go over your shoes and you're good to go. Okay, and then I guess the last thing we're looking at are gloves. Yep, absolutely. You know, hands and feet are where you're going to get most, you know, obviously going to get cold. Mm -hmm. Um, these protect you from that. Um, there are some other, you know, different kind of levels. So like these are like just regular thermal, they're fleeced. Mm -hmm. So if it's not too, too cold, you wear these. And if you get really cold, then you want to get the Big Daddy. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's something for everybody. Absolutely. And so regardless if someone is a beginning rider, intermediate, or a full-fledged local professional, there's some <laughs> gear for them. And it's, again, it's all... It all it all depends on whether you want to continue riding sh through the winter. A lot of people prefer to stay indoors and ride indoors. But if you are the kind of person that gets your thrill out of riding outdoors, you know, don't want to stop, then you want to come and get some winter gear and stay warm. You know, I'm definitely going to invest in some of those pants because the great thing is, whether if you're riding your bike or if you want to go for a walk or, you know, just happen to be out in the frigid temperatures, those insulated fleece line pants are something that everybody should have. Definitely, definitely. It keeps you outdoors. It keeps you mobile and keeps you comfortable in doing so. Yeah. So takes away all, all of our excuses. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take another break and back with more. My name is Christopher Harris, and I've been with the Louisville Water Company since March of 2018. Well, my current job description right now that I just acquired is uh, Operations Supervisor over in Meter Reading, and which entails me um, overseeing the day-to-day -day activities that go on particularly with uh, the Meter Reading Department. So the average person, normally the first person that they'll talk to is going to be someone that's going to be in the field first. Um, usually whatever questions or concerns they may have in the field, um, they'll get brought back up to me should it escalate that far. And then should I need to do a visit with the customer, which I've done already, or look into other situations um, that they've dealt with in the field, then that's how I'll get involved. I definitely consider myself to be a problem solver. Um, how that works normally is, and fitting in with my skill set, is that whenever someone brings me um, an issue with maybe just their day-to-day -day without even getting to the customers um, because I've been out in the field before um, I've got a little bit of a leg up about what they're dealing with and how to problem solve because we have to problem solve out in the field to begin with anyway I would categorize Lover Water Company as being a great place to work um, based on um, the longevity that they've had had a good history. Um, they have their share of challenges like any other company. Um, however, at the same time, uh, the company is still growing. Um, there are various opportunities that are still continuing to open up. Uh, very diverse as well. Um, Open-minded to be able to hear um, concerns that people may have and also innovate fresh ideas as well. If I was gonna give someone advice, um, that was gonna be following in my footsteps to do what I do here or what anybody else does here. Um, I would encourage them to apply themselves um, without holding back, uh, give 100% um, in what they do, uh, put their best foot forward. And I believe honestly that anybody can have a shot at doing well. As far as us having the best water on the planet, um, even when I go into different cities uh, and I tell people about my work, um, that's the first thing out of their mouth. It's like, oh, Louisville Water has the best water. Well, I 
know this is your favorite segment because it's another piece with Tyler and what's it called? My Swaggy Wag. I had to ask her what does what is a wag and all that and she explained it. I can't remember but it sounded cute. So let's take a look. <laughs> Hello, hello, hello. Get on in here and let's talk about some things that are absolutely a thing. Today, let's go over nail inspo and how you should be looking and styling your nails for the fall and winter season. I have scoured the internet. I have taken probably a hundred screenshots, so I've done the work for you. And this is what I know in short. You can either stay classic and go with the matte colors, the burgundies, the dark grays, or you can get trendy and go chrome and glitter. Stay tuned and let me show you how you should be looking this fall, winter season. So every picture you take should be a nail fee. I am very excited to talk about all things nails. First up, nudes. Nudes are a classic. They're never going out of style, any color. Mustard, that's on the list. I love how the mustard looks. Denims. Love things, denims, all the different types of blues, but if there's a richness to that type of blue. So any blue denim you find is great. Chrome. I have chrome on my nails right now. And speaking of chrome, look what I did. I did my own at-home gel manicure, and I chromed my nails. It looks like chrome can basically work on any color you have. So there's the powder you take and you put it over top of the polish and voila, you have chrome. I wanted to spice it up a bit, so I went with a thin glitter French in hot pink, of course. And this little nail stamper is saving lives. I also went with a little bit of a design and done. At home, gel nails, don't forget your top coat and it's gel, so as soon as you put it in, and as soon as you take it out, after that 60 seconds, you have no drying time, you have no chips, no smudges. Voila, at home Gel X nails. Everything that I used here is on my Amazon store. All right, so who is with me for nail fee season? I wanna see all the chromes, I wanna see all the matte colors. I definitely wanna see that thin French, I'm loving it. Whether you go to the nail salon yourself or you do it at home like I did, I want to see it. I want you to tag me, share your pictures and your nail fees with me. Tag me at my swaggy wag, okay? Everything I use to create this manicure at home is linked in my Amazon store. So if you go to my website, www.myswaggywag.com, or if you go on my Instagram page at my swaggy wag and click on my Amazon link, it'll be there. I did this at home, you can too, or go there. Let them do it for you. Happy nail fee season. You know what, I think that's our show. Ooh, and that's our time. And we'll see you back here next time on Urban Lifestyle. Bye. Bye, take care. <laughs>